Yeah. Mark. So nice to see you. Likewise. How are you? Excited to see your brain. <laughs> Actually, I am. <laughs> Always been a little curious about what that thing looked like. Well, and you've done a lot of things to help it. Yeah. So, Mark, thank you for doing this. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. I hate the word, the words mental illness, because it shames people. It sticks That's right. Them. It's approaching it from a negative, you're broken, as opposed to, yeah, you can optimize it and have a healthier life, which will improve your mindset. Right. And I was in the Army for 10 years. Oh, I thank was you for your <laughs> medic right. and realized it didn't like being shot at. Got retrained as an x ray technician. And then I went to medical school and then. Um, I did my psychiatric training, the Walter Reed Army Medical Center right. okay. in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And so many service people, they want nothing to do with mental health because they're not weak. They're not sick. And it's like, it's not mental. Call somebody mental and you shame them. Call them a brain and you elevate them. Mm -hmm. And so um, from a performance standpoint, everybody wants a better brain. And mm -hmm. so I'm really grateful that you're here, but I want to hear from you. What's your goal? So it's multifaceted. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those seals who've been passionate about growth and development. And I've been involved in meditation since before I went in the seals in 21 and um, yoga. And I have a very good personal practice. Uh, and I teach that stuff to the SEALs. So at, at one level, you know, I'm seeking to go from good to great or from great to like optimized for the rest of my life, blah, blah, blah. And the other level, I grew up in a pretty traumatic family. You probably saw that from my intake, you know, seven or eight generations of alcoholism, both sides of the family. Father was pretty abusive and I love him to death. He's still alive, but you know, there's a lot of trauma that is associated with that. And I don't think I really learned about the physiological impact of abuse and alcohol, you know, this kind of that epigenetic as well as, you know, use that I had early in my life, especially, you know, felt fit right in with the Navy, right? To, to, to be gone for six weeks and then come back and just whip it up for a few days, you know, which we call binge drinking. So it was definitely part of my life. So, um, and then add to that, 20 years as a Navy SEAL, what I'm learning now about micro trauma, TBI, lots of parachute accidents, lots of, you know, blowing things up and shooting things and the effect that that has on the brain. Um, and so the more I research that, and I also have a nonprofit where we're helping vets, I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe there's some, <laughs> there's some work that I could do on my own brain. Not to mention before you even became a SEAL, soccer, the concussion yeah. when you were young, yeah. the water skiing accident that knocked you out, and they stack. They stack. O over time. Um, but even with a family history, a generational family history of alcoholism, when I was reading your history, it didn't seem like that grabbed you. Well, here's where I think that grabbed me, right? I, I think the alcoholism and the mostly verbal and emotional abuse that came from my father, you know, you develop certain coping mechanisms, right? Some of them are emotional and some of them are habitual. And so for me, exercise and alcohol were remedies for feeling, you know, a little bit, this is more psychology, but there's a physiological component to it, right? They always the hyper arousal and whatever happens to your limbic system. And so I dealt with that. My management techniques were uh, exercise, which served me well to be a SEAL. In fact, a lot of SEALs come from a background not unlike mine. And it helps. That type of background actually has a, is a great gift as well because you become hypersensitive and extremely intuitive as a result of that environment. So mm -hmm. it makes you really good special operator. And there's not a damn thing that can hurt you if you grow up in an abusive family. So you go to SEAL training and your instructors are like, you got nothing on my dad, <laughs> right? So it's easy, you know I mean? I was number one graduate in my SEAL training class and I'm like, I applaud my dad for that and meditation, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the downside is I, I had to work hard to feel good in the morning and then, you know, 
having a drink at night would make me feel normal to, to like down regulate. Now that, that's fine when you're 20, but not so good when you're 50. And so it took me a while to kind of solve that one. And I quit drinking, um, you know, a while ago, but you know, that stuff also, just like micro trauma, that stuff builds up. So I wanted to make sure that wasn't going to be an issue when I was seven or eight. It's one of the biggest issues we deal with, like on social media, whenever I post about alcohol, the haters come, but people pay an attention. And the reason I'm not a fan of alcohol is I've seen hundreds of thousands of scams and alcohol doesn't make your brain younger. Doesn't it does not. Brain. No, I totally get that. Alcohol is probably one of the most corrosive substances you could probably put in your body. Yeah, it's a toxin. It's definitely a toxin. Um, so, yeah. On the idea that marijuana is innocuous is just a lie. That's I a mean, lie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. I mean, probably shouldn't be putting people in jail because they're smoking pot. We should stop that. But yeah. let's not say it's innocuous. Um, tell me about your business. So my, I've got um, two businesses. One's called Seal Fit, and that is uh, train like a Navy SEAL to be as mentally tough as a SEAL for civilians. And then I have a, a leadership development coaching company called Unbeatable. And this is a model I developed first for spec ops candidates, and now we deliver it to corporate trainings, which is integrated development, which you would completely understand. It's like we recognize or we believe that by by treating an individual as they're treating their body separate from their mind, separate from their emotions, separate from their spirit and training those. Most people don't even think of training those, but most people just think of training the body. Well, we look at those and say, well, the human being is all, you know, it's one, it's integrated whole. We only talk about those things just to understand them and to study them. So let's train all of those aspects of an individual together. So we call it five mountain training. So we have, physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, and spiritual training, which are things that you do to you know, deliberately try to improve your circumstances. And we call it vertical development, which leads to an, an, a growth through different stages of consciousness. Stages of development. I love development. that so much. I always talk about the four circles. It's like, what's the biology? That's where your brain and body are. Right. Psychology, psychology which is how you think and right. your development the social circle, your relationships and what's happening in your life and the spiritual circle, which is why the heck do you care? I love it. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. No, I yeah. love that. Um, speaking of psychological, how are your thoughts day to day? Sounds like you've been training them for a long time. Yeah, I have. I've, uh, and I've done therapy ever since I married one therapist. Married a therapist. Yeah, 1994. <laughs> so, you know, the first few signs that my thinking wasn't like squared away, she was like, okay, we're going to sign you up, you know? And so I've been doing therapy for a long time. I look at therapy as just emotional coaching. You know, if people want a That's physical it. coach, you should have an emotional coach. Right. And a thought coach. So um, it's very, it's been very helpful. Put an exclamation point on that. Yeah. That one was good. I like that. For sure. Oh, goodness. You've given me so much. I'm happy. Me too. SPAC stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. It is a nuclear medicine study that looks at blood flow and activity, it looks at how your brain works. When we look at your scan, your cerebellum sleepy. And I think it's because you had so many things to your head. So we have some work to do. So it like, can be looks better. like I took a bullet through the head in one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it's showing is both your temporal lobes got hurt. But if you just think of the physics, your brain is the consistency of soft leather. And it's housed in a really hard skull that has sharp bones. Right. Which is why you should never let a child put a softball in your head. Right. Now, the brain floats in water, but every time you hit a soccer ball with your head, it does this. Every time you blow up a door, it 
does this. When you had the water skiing accident, that, when you had the fall, when you were younger, it was like, whoa, because it, it has nowhere to go. So what you see is there's some trouble here in the front, there's some trouble here in the back, and we want to get this back. And, and it's possible, I'll actually show you in a minute. Your emotional brain, so part of your limbic brain, on the left side, not so much on the right, really busy. Um, probably with your meditation, martial arts training. I mean, I don't know, because I don't know you that well, but it's probably settled down the irritability. But if you didn't have that training, you'd probably be irritable. I would think so. Yeah, I, yeah. I especially, are you right-handed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I see this left temporal lobe, it can go with dark, darkness, dark thoughts. You have a lot of great brain activity. You see those holes in the back? That's in your occipital cortex, your visual cortex. Often doesn't cause visual problems, but it tells me you had multiple concussions. It's not a natural hole, it's just where blood is not flowing. Is that what so how I make the pictures is I tell the computer I want to see a certain level of brain activity. I set the threshold at 55. Anything below that shows up as a hole or a death. So you don't have holes. What you have though is pretty significant low blood flow. And you don't want low blood flow because if you have low blood flow, brain cells aren't getting nourished. Yeah. Like we want them to. So what do you think about all this? I think it's very interesting. I really appreciate it. I think, um, yeah, typically Navy SEALs tend to think they're pretty, pretty squared away. And, and I am in a lot of ways, <laughs> but like I said, there's always room for improvement. This is why I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm humble enough to know that I ain't perfect. And so it's, it's good to know to look inside the, look under the hood, so to speak, and see that there's room for improvement. That I would take, um, our red box has two packets a day, a great multiple vitamin with very high B vitamins. In fact, the same dose of B vitamins that have been shown to decrease the conversion from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease. Really? So I like, what's the dose? Put it in there. It's got 2,000 units of vitamin D. It's got a lot of great stuff. I think that would be really valuable because I'm a little bit random with my supplementation. But we need to figure out how can we get you better overall. So that's our goal. I mean, imagine if we could get you 10% more function. Yeah, great. I mean, with as functional as you are. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's real optimization. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, there's always room for improvement. Right? Even, even if we get 10%, there's room for 10% more. That was one of the beautiful things about being around SEAL team guys is that we're always striving.